Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Suzanne Hirash, and I'm the moderator for a webinar called This is the Right Time for 10 Gigabits Capacity. Now, if you have any questions, please send them in the Q&A section of the webinar, and we will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. I would now like to introduce you to our presenters. Alex Cernick with RF Engineering and Energy Resource, and George Harlaftis from Intercom Telecom. I'm going, to, I'm going to review the webinar agenda with you right now. First, we will talk about Intercom Telecom and RF Engineering and Energy Resource. Next, we will discuss the challenges that customers like yourselves are experiencing, followed by Intercom's unique solution. We will then end the webinar with a Q&A session to answer the questions you submit during the presentation. I'm now going to turn the webinar over to Alex. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, RF Engineering is a global component manufacturer. With over 20 years in the industry, we specialize in delivering the industry's first licensed microwave antenna. And this supports six gig to 42 gig. We offer the only antenna that has a field swappable feed, allowing you to change frequencies along with proprietary interfaces. Uh, and this product works with almost every licensed manufacturer available. In addition, we also serve as Intercom Telecom's official US distributor, specializing in their sales, marketing, and engineering activities. As a global company, we also offer unlicensed point-to-point -point antennas, frequency ranging from 4 gig to 5.8, point to multipoint antennas, sectors, Yagi's, Omni's, panels, and any other antenna type solution. Working with you either directly or through a distribution partner, we're here to bring you a custom product solution coupled with world-class service. Together, we can connect the world. Thanks, Alex. Going. Yeah, um, so, um, you may, uh, for those of you who may not be um, um, uh, known, uh, who may not know Intercom Telecom as a brand, uh, Intercom Telecom is a multinational company. Uh, I'm actually talking to you from our subsidiary here in Atlanta, uh, where we cover all of the uh, sales uh, uh, for the entire North American market. Intracom Telecom is uh, a global telecommunications uh, system solutions vendor. We have uh, more than 45 years of experience in the market. We're over uh, 1,800 employees worldwide with uh, presence in 17 countries. We have three major R&D centers and uh, we are exporting to 70 countries already. Now, as far as the core offerings uh, of Intracom Telecom, the wireless access and transmission is the primary one. This is all of the point-to-point, uh, -point, microwave, millimeter wave solutions, all of the wireless. The uh, Telco software solutions is uh, designed uh, software solutions for uh, Telcos, uh, but one of the major uh, products that we have under this umbrella is the IPTV, pretty big product and platform uh, from our local office here in Atlanta. The ICT Smart City and Surveillance Solutions is another uh, uh, department. We have uh, basically Smart City, as uh, the term mentions, uh, Smart City Solutions, and uh, we also have the Energy Solutions that you see here, and that is basically the Smart Grid and energy management. Now, having those uh, four core offerings, it is understood that the markets that we serve are telecom operators, utility companies, large enterprises, healthcare institutions, as well as public authorities. Let's look at the uh, wireless uh, portfolio from Intracom Telecom. As you can see, it's pretty large. And uh, the um, main categories of the network that you see here is uh, the transport, the aggregation side of the network, 
and as well as the last mile axis. Now we have two main technologies that we cover uh, all of these um, um, uh, sections of the network. We have the point to multipoint, which is the, this one right here. And we also have the point to point. Now the point to point is split in the microwave section. This part has not been introduced in the US market as of yet, but we also have the millimeter wave, the E and V band. We're gonna talk about this in our solution. Uh, last but not least, I wanted to mention that everything, um, as far as antennas are concerned, they're in-house designed and manufactured by Intracom Telecom. And this is, uh, uh, the company name is Fiony Telecommunications, which is part of our, uh, it'd be part of the Intracom group. So we have E-band antennas, dual pole, microwave, all the antennas, you know, associated with our solution, uh, they're our own design and manufacturing. Now let's look a little bit at what are the main issues uh, that uh, you guys are faced with. Uh, we all know about the main uh, concept of maxed out uh, microwave links. And the this is obviously the network side, high utilization rates on your microwave, microwave links, and there's little space left for growth. As far as the service is concerned, you can either have a reduced service because of those maxed out uh, capacities, uh, or even perhaps downtime during peak, peak demand. Now, the customers on the other uh, side, you know, uh, the, you, they're, they're asking for additional demand that may not be able to be served. And those customers, because of the situation, may decide to do uh, their business somewhere else because of the dissatisfied service. So pretty important issues that uh, need to be um, considered for options. And what are those options? Let's look at these uh, different possibilities. So you may consider removing the microwave existing infrastructure. Let's say, for example, lay fiber or leased lines. But that means that the microwave capex is going to be unused. Now, on top of that, Another issue may be that those uh, fiber, you know, or lease lines may not be available. Having another option is uh, uh, the possibility of reuse your microwave existing infrastructure. For example, you can get additional channels. And again, this can be for your licensed or even unlicensed microwave links. Obviously, these come at a very higher uh, at, at a higher cost because you, you just have to purchase the spectrum. But we all know that not in all cases the uh, spectrum is available. Now, you also have the uh, option of inserting a second microwave radio. But as you know, this is going to come with uh, it's going to come with a capex as well as opex. Both cases will be high, and Eventually, you know, you may run into the same situation just like before. You know, those those additional links may run into uh, a maxed out uh, resource scenario. So it's not going to be a permanent solution. Then in this case, we have to consider uh, another solution. And this is where Intracom Telecom comes into the picture. Intracom Telecom solution is called the dual band overbuild. The term dual band is something we all know. It's a pretty catchy phrase lately. Uh, the key element here is the overbuild of that dual band where we are, what we are saying is you're adding the E band on top of your existing microwave inf infrastructure without making any changes to the microwave infrastructure. Let's see how we do that. So multiple gigabit capacity up to 10 gigabits for a low OPEX. Obviously you're going, because you're using that E-band on top of your microwave, you have the capability of reaching 10 gigabit capacity. The low OPEX that you see here is because of the registration procedure of E-band links in the US, where you basically, it's, it's considered a, a, a light registration process um, and you just register the link. Now, the key element here is no dismantling of your existing microwave antennas. This is a key point. As far as the distance is concerned, that 
distance is the exact same as the microwave length. So you don't have to change anything. You keep the exact same distance of your microwave length. You're adding the E band and you're reaching the capacity of 10 gigabits before because of that E band. The transitions, they happen simply, quick between the E band and the microwave link because the core of that solution is based off of the G8032 ring protocol. So we talked about the high level concept. Let's look at how this overbuild works in a step-by-step -step process. The picture that you see here is just an example of your current situation. You've got your microwave link. This is designated with the two towers and the microwave antennas here. Now this microwave link that may be existing in your network could be from any vendor. This is the key part of our solution that it's agnostic to what your microwave vendor is. And for the sake of this demonstration, we consider that uh, you're running at one gigabit capacity. This is the capacity over here. So your existing microwave link has reached almost full capacity and there's no room for extra services or customers. What we are saying is because of that situation, you leave the microwave antennas and the radios over there. You just add the additional E-band link. And this is how you get the use of the E-band overbuilt to, over to the existing microwave link. And that's how you create the dual band solution. Now, when you establish that connectivity there in the E-band, the E-band, you see here the Ultralink GX80, this is our radio, we're going to talk about this in a little bit. The E-band, the Ultralink GX80, is going to be your primary transport method. That capacity, as you can see, is 10 gigabits. So your E-band link is active and your, exist, your previous link, your microwave link, is now upgraded from 1 gigabit to 10 gigabits. But we all know that because of the physics, not because of any vendor, E-band is susceptible to weather. It is not exact, it doesn't have the exact same characteristics as a microwave transmission. So let us assume in this case, you get, uh, you get weather conditions that um, um, actually make it difficult for the transmission to, st to stay at uh, 10 gigabits. That's for the E-band. Let's say it drops down to five gigabits, but still four to five gigabits is much better off than the initial capacity that you had at one gigabit with your microwave. We'll even take it a step further. Let's say that you have thunderstorms. And in that situation, your E-band may not even work. So what we, at that particular point, what we do is we switch to the microwave link. So because of that weather condition, the microwave link takes over the transmission. That way your high priority traffic and customers are being served. And of course the good news is that it occurs on the average only a few hours per year. So what you see here is that that capacity from the five dropped to one gigabit, which is the exact same capacity you had uh, initially with your microwave. Now, when the weather clears, the system automatically understands that it has the option to switch back to E-band, and that's what it does. So upon the weather improvement, the E-band takes over and you got your dual bank link back to high capacities. That is designated with the 10 gigabits that you see here. So we talked about the main concepts here as far as what is associated with a solution. Let's talk a little bit about the individual components now. First question that we may uh, answer is why Intracon Telecom? Well, because it's agnostic to the microwave vendor. The solution can be used for any licensed or unlicensed vendor. In addition to that, we have in-house solutions for brownfield, but greenfield at the same time. 
The brownfield is what we talked about um, a few uh, seconds ago. This is the case of the microwave and the E-band link being parallel to each other, where you start off with your microwave and then you're adding the uh, uh, E-band on top of that. But for cases where you may have a brand new area that you want to serve and you don't have an existing microwave there um, in order not to dismantle the existing microwave antennas, uh, this is what we consider the green field. And you may use a dual band, the dual band antenna that we already have as part of our portfolio. So that dual band works exactly the same way we just mentioned earlier in the step-by-step -step process. Nothing changes. It's just that instead of two separate antennas, we now have a single dual band antenna that does the switching exactly as we talked about before. Now you will notice an asterisk here for the flange cassette. The idea here is that this um, uh, is a custom made cassette to make sure that it matches the specific microwave radio vendor uh, that you want to have as part of this solution. We're gonna talk about, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Okay, so the um, Allen GX80 that you see here inside that red square is the, uh, the primary uh, um, uh, solution, you know, that we're offering. This is the E-band link, the E-band radio. This is our flagship unit. It is a 10 gigabit, uh, a full duplex radio. But I also wanted to mention a few things about the rest of the portfolio that we have uh, for V and E band. Over here, that uh, as you can see, the 60 gigahertz, we have the Street Note V60 point to point uh, link uh, radio. This is 1.6 gigabit in full duplex. The beauty about this radio is that it's designed for street level deployment and it actually has the antenna embedded inside and it's a self-aligning antenna. So all you gotta do is as soon as you install it, it's just, just pointed in the uh, general direction and it's gonna find the best signal there and it's gonna do the alignment by itself. Switching to the remaining, the, to the E-band uh, section of our portfolio, we got the Ultralink FXA compact node at three gigabit full duplex. We spoke about the Ultralink GX80, the 10 gigabit. This is our primary solution for the overbuilt, the dual band overbuilt. But we also have the Ultralink BX70, which is a 1.6 gigabit TDD radio, enterprise connectivity targeting. And last but not least, we have the Ultralink XR80. Now this is part of our roadmap, but it will deliver 30 gigabits in full duplex transmission. As far as the antenna is concerned, uh, I'd like to focus a little bit on this. This is the greenfield scenario that we discussed. And the idea here is that if you don't want to have the two separate antennas, you're serving, uh, serving in a brand new area, you can still use any microwave uh, vendor that you want. And the part right here on the antenna is where the GX80 is going to uh, attach. And this section over here, that's the custom made cassette that we have for the target radio flange. That's the third party microwave. What are, what are the solution benefits? Now, the uh, concept here is that you're going from two antennas into a single antenna. So obviously logistics and handling will be reduced in half. The same applies for the required space on the pole. It's going to get reduced by 50%. And obviously the installation and alignment time. You don't have two antennas per tower. You only have one. So that is obviously reduced as well. So having talked about the um, elements, the concept, the uh, idea, as well as the individual components, we think that uh, the next most important uh, uh, part to discuss is what we actually did it. So the particular um, name that you see here, Rapid Systems, is our most recent uh, solution that we provided with the uh, uh, dual band overbuild. 
Rapid Systems is an internet service provider located in Tampa, Florida. They're, uh, it's a company that they're providing their customers with fixed wireless services in 11 counties in Florida. And the problem they had is that they had existing 11 gigahertz Cambium point-to-point -point 820C microwave links that were not sufficient. Their customer, their end, their end customer needed more capacity and they couldn't serve that. Those microwave links were maxed out. So they talked to us and, uh, you know, we gave them uh, the pitch about the uh, dual band overbuild. They liked the idea and we actually implemented it and it worked fantastically. The pictures that you see here on the right are from the actual installation. I was there myself and I took the pictures with my cell phone. I would also like to mention that uh, we have a great radio. Uh, we are uh, proposing this fantastic solution, you know, so that you can easily transition your capacity from your existing uh, maxed out links to gigabit capacities of E-band level. But the heart of this solution is because of our modem. Now, what we did is we decided some time ago that we wanted to basically have our own modem designed and manufactured. We didn't want to have a third party solution off the shelf like most of our competitors do. So we invested the money, we designed this modem and we can customize it per every single per, per product that we're offering. This customization gives us tremendous advantage in every single product that we're offering. This modem, as you can see, has an MTBF of 157 years. For the E-band, is capable of reaching 1,024 QAM. Another very important uh, uh, thing that I need to mention is the highest spectral efficiency in the market at 80 gigahertz. This can be very easily uh, shown uh, uh, because we are the only ones that can actually deliver 10 gigabits at 80 gigahertz with only a 1500 megahertz channel. Everybody else requires a 2000 megahertz channel. Let's look at the uh, uh, product highlights real quick. Now, what you see here is uh, a picture of uh, the side of the radio. It shows the different ports that are, are available. It's basically an embedded switch. That's why it has all these ports. It operates in 70 and 80 gigahertz band, uh, different configurations that can be used for any tier all the way up to tier one operators. The circle part that you see here is the 1500 megahertz channel that we spoke earlier. Uh, we also support the 2000 megahertz, but as we said, you know, the 1500 is our, our uh, unique advantage and nobody else has that. That again proves the enormous uh, spectral efficiency that we have. But another extremely important part that I want to mention here is the system gain. The Ultralink GX80 has the highest system gain in the market. What you see here is the 68 dB, excess of 68 dB as the standard power operation. This is the system gain that we have at 10 gigabits in 2000 megahertz channel and 128 QAM modulation. Very soon, we'll introduce an additional 2 dB system gain with the enhanced power operation. And this is going to be a software upload. This is already sold uh, globally we're just waiting for a technicality with the FCC to get the approval, and it's going to be available very soon. So this is the highest system gain in the market. Again, it's going to be in excess of 70 dB at 10 gigabits. Some additional uh, features that you see here, the system is uh, uh, capable of supporting carrier Ethernet networking functionality, advanced packet synchronization options uh, that may be required for tier one operators. Uh, and uh, it, it is also capable of supporting Ethernet as well as CPRI mode in one unit. So very advanced radio. Some of you may say, okay, 
Got it. I understand the system is has the highest system gain in the market, but but what's in it for me? What does that mean for me? That's a very valid question. There are several things that can be considered as met benefits. Uh, they both fall in either OPEX as well as CAPEX savings. The primary one is longer link distances. Obviously, with a system gain, you're going to reach further. Uh, there's also the issue of, of uh, robustness of the link. A higher system gain, especially the highest in the market, will give you more robust links to, to, during weather anomalies. So think of it in terms of 128 uh, QAM modulation. That modulation, that signal is going to stick around longer, and it's not going to switch down to, let's say, 64 QAM that easily because of that system gain. So therefore your capacity will be a lot more stable. You also have better link reliability. That link is gonna stick around for much longer as active link at the lowest modulation. Capex savings. Well, when we compare against uh, some of our competitors, we have noticed a difference of sometimes uh, in excess of uh, 7 dB at 10 gigabits. That is in the system game. With such phenomenal difference of 10 gigabits of system gain for the same kind of performance, you can actually have smaller antennas on one or even both sides of the link. So as you can imagine, immediately you're talking about a smaller rental space on the tower. So significant CapEx savings there as well. Okay. Um, Alex, that's it. As far as the product is concerned, would you like to take over here and kind of give us uh, uh, some additional info on your uh, performance guarantee? Absolutely. And thank you, George. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> as an additional incentive, we, we wanted to put together a program uh, for two parts. One is a thank you for attending, but uh, as a way to, to, to get um, this product successfully into your networks. Um, and that idea is built around a performance guarantee. Mm -hmm. So we have a uh, defined customer performance guarantee program um, that is contractually based. It has customizable test plans, but simply said, it, it gives you a 30 day trial and safeguard that allows you to, to prove out what George has been saying that our ability to go further distances, offer more capacity, offer more reliability, and even in some extreme cases, use smaller antenna sizes and or couple onto any licensed or unlicensed system, um, this program gives you that safeguard where if you've got links in your network that are 10 miles or less and could be 11, 18, 23 gig, um, we've got a, a program that would allow you to, for a 30 day period, we set, um, the criteria of success. We actively work together. We monitor the solution and you're able to really safeguard your investment. Um, we've taken that and we've coupled that into a, an incentive, which I'll, I'll reach out to everyone on this, uh, phone as well. Um, until the end of the month, we'll, we'll extend our promotion, uh, which essentially it's $5,400 for the radio um, link, added antennas and ancillaries. Um, the way to start all these things are with GPS coordinates. So if you have troublesome sites, um, reach out to us. Uh, our information is on the next slide. We'll provide you with a link budget analysis let us know what system are we working with? Is this a standalone deployment where we're looking to extend just 10 gig e-bank coverage or is this an overbuilt application? Um, an example, we just um, had a customer where we overlaid a Cambium A20C series. He had 1.2 gigs, insufficient capacity, and uh, at a distance of almost seven miles, we were able to offer three nines of availability and 10 gigabits per second with our hybrid solution. Um, George, if you can switch to the, the next slide. 
again, thank everyone for your for your time. Um, we'll open this kind of to, to a Q and A. Uh, but if you do have those problemsome links, um, please reach out to me, Alex at RFEQ. Uh, with those GPS coordinates, let me know again if it's a standalone or as a as a hybrid, and we'll provide you with a, a quick link budget um, turnaround within a couple of hours. Thank you, Alex um, and George. It was a great presentation. We did get a couple of questions that came in. Um, mm -hmm. The first question is: I have a microwave link at seven miles. Will this work? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, the the immediate answer is that we this is this is uh, dependent on the actual uh, installation area. We will we'll, we would have to really consider the GPS coordinates, the availability, see what kind of availability uh, the customer has at the microwave link, um, and uh, you know see if that's enough, and we can uh, work out based on the RF planning, the uh, situation and see if it's gonna be sufficient. But uh, I would say that based on previous experience, I think it's, I think it's doable. Uh, we have seen uh, at seven miles, we, uh, Alex and I have already uh, worked at uh, uh, an install in seven miles where there's multiple gigabit capacity available there. Uh, but yeah, shoot us over um, some coordinates and uh, we'll take it from there. We'll check the uh, installation, uh, the availability there for the microwave, and it should work. Right. And just to add on what George said, we've got several customer examples over seven miles. So it, it all depends on rain regions. Right. And then are we talking standalone or are we talking hybrid? If this is an overlay, absolutely. Right. Um, but it, it all starts with GPS coordinates. So Alex at RFEQ, send over the GPS um, and I will definitively answer your question today. Okay. Um, another question, how quickly does the solution switch traffic? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, so the, uh, the switching between the uh, EBAN link, the Ultralink GX80 and the third party microwave, that link happens uh, with uh, the use of the G8032V2 protocol. So that happens within 50 milliseconds. So it's extremely fast switching for the link. Okay. Um, we have about three more questions that we'll, uh, we'll go over and then we'll conclude. Um, another question is, um, how do I apply for the performance guarantee and what else is involved? Good question as well. Um, Leveraging the email above, alex at rfeq.com, uh, starts with the GPS coordinates, uh, your name, company information, uh, short overview of what you're looking to accomplish. Um, I'll quickly follow up with a phone call. Um, from there, we'll do a link budget analysis. Uh, that would give us um, the ability to say, this is going to work at um, this availability or this capacity. And then we have we have a whole documented um, process for the performance guarantee. Um, it's a contractual document we would go through um, with predefined um, KPIs. And the, the premise of this, it's a 30-day eval where we define success. And if it's anything other than what we predefined, it comes back at our cost. Um, we've done probably 15 of these um, in the last six months, and not a single one has ever come back. Um, so we invite your hardest links, and uh, we look forward to, to any opportunity. Great. Uh, another question, what are the technical requirements for the microwave, microwave radio? Sure, I'll take that one. Um, so basically, we just need a gigabit port uh, to connect the GX80 with a third party microwave radio. So as soon as uh, we have that uh, gigabit port available, we can connect the two radios in order to switch the traffic between them. As far as the uh, protocol um, is concerned, what we really need to make sure is that the third party microwave can at least support the G8032V2 protocol, or if it doesn't, at least it allows it to pass uh, transparently. As soon as that happens, then we're able to do the switching from the GX80, the Ultralink GX80, 
and that's your work volume. Mm -hmm. To quantify one additional point for the radio types, <clears throat> so it either can be licensed, either a, a single core or dual core, uh, it doesn't matter, or it can even be a unlicensed product. Um, the, the key again is that gigabit port, um, and, and then the, 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 the ring protocol, GU32. So, as long as it has that, we can operate both on licensed and unlicensed links. Mm -hmm. Um, I have one another question. What is the longest link you've been able to do with the overbuild application? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, this is uh, uh, similar to um, what we have seen uh, based on our experience. What we, uh, I, I think, uh, again, it, it really depends on the specific coordinates because we have to take into consideration the rain rate. But I think the, uh, in excess of five miles, uh, you should you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, even 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 as long as seven miles, we'll have to see, of course, what is the exact availability and what kind of capacity you will have for that uh, availability. But it's uh, I, I think it's doable between five to seven miles, even longer in some cases if you want to go for lower uh, uh, capacities. For example, if you want to go to three uh, gigabits you may even exceed the 10 kilometers or, or seven miles. So it really, uh, it, it's a specific case that we have to consider for accuracy, uh, accuracy's uh, sake, you know, um, the specific coordinates of that deployment. But it, it looks very positive to exceed five miles. Yeah, uh, and to add on, um, I, I've done several link budgets over the last couple of months with us. Uh, we had a successful deployment at 6.7. We've got some deployments now at 7.3. Uh, the furthest I've seen uh, was 9.25. Um, and it, But as George just mentioned, it wasn't 10 gigs. Uh, right. The sacrifice is capacity. So I think that was a 4 gigabit per second um, with two three nines through two nines so it, it, it all varies again on rain regions where you're located right. what the capacity is um but the, the thing of this radio and what makes this so unique is that proprietary chipset that ability to get more system gain and mm -hmm. to be able to push this past barriers coupled with its ability to agnostically work with almost anybody Right. So this is a perfect product to fill in gaps and to offer last mile fiber extension. Mm -hmm. um, again, we, we welcome every opportunity, anything we can do to be of assistance, please reach out. Again, our information is right on the slide. Um, and, and then again, I just want to thank everyone for their time um, uh, and attending this webinar today. Okay, um, I do have one more question here that I think is pretty important. Is um, do you have inventory? Very good one. Absolutely. <laughs> um, they are all located in Portage, Michigan. Um, there is uh, tons of GX eighties. We've got some of the, the TDD stuff, um, the BX seventies. Uh, over 20 links of the street nodes, which is the 60 gig, uh, which will literally install itself. So uh, plenty of inventory. We've got, again, that performance guarantee program to help safeguard your investment. And we, we welcome every opportunity. And again, thank you for your time. And the, 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 yeah, the last thing that I want to add here is just a summary of everything that we have discussed, that this is a, this is a solution that is a, the perfect solution for somebody that doesn't want to dismantle their microwave uh, infrastructure. So you're getting the best radio as far as system gain is concerned, performance on the RF side. You're just adding it on top of your existing microwave infrastructure without any changes to the antennas. You're getting a switching that happens within 50 milliseconds for that, rate, uh, for that link with a third-party microwave that could be anybody. So anybody's radio, licensed or unlicensed, easy transition, to multiple uh, gigabit capacities to solve your problem of congested microwave links. And again, thanks everybody for joining the webinar. Yes, and we will send you a recording to you and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Thank you for your time, everyone.